What is up, Yens guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. Tonight, we've got another video cast here, and I've got a special guest on, Mr. Cody Fye, the one and only. How are you doing tonight, Cody? Good, Ryan. Good. Glad to be with you. Good. Good. I'm, uh, I'm glad you could get some time. We could get you on and, and talk. Tonight, we're going to talk Kerwinsville Lake and... Ultimately, you've got a tournament coming up there here, not this weekend, but next weekend. Yeah, you've got, you got a tournament coming up Saturday, May 22nd. Uh, it's going to be held right there at the lake. Um, musky only. Um, just looking for a, a good time and, you know, get like-minded folks together. And hopefully we get some slime in the boat. You know, I mean, as long as everybody's having a good time, that's all that matters. Yeah, and so this is why we wanted to get you on. We wanted to just do a little bit of promo for your tournament coming up on Kerwinsville. Um, just talk Kerwinsville in general, you know, highlight some of the points. I got to fish that tournament with you last year. I had a blast. Uh, we didn't I, I we didn't get a fish in the bag. I have unfinished business up on Kerwinsville. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be this year, at least this upcoming weekend, next weekend. But we're going to get back up there and put a put a nice, beautiful tiger in the net. So I am, uh, so talk to me about Kerwinsville a little bit. You know, one of the goals for this video, we just want to get people, you know, get the word out to people about Kerwinsville Lake. Kerwinsville Lake to me is one of those like hidden gem type areas. It's a really awesome area to bring your family out for whatever you want to do. You want to fish for a day, you want to hike, you want to camp. There's a lot of stuff going on that you got, you guys got there at Kerwinsville, but the highlight is that, is that lake you know, and really the river system, right? So talk to me about Kerwinsville. What does, uh, you know, what, what does Kerwinsville mean to you? And then give me an outline of what you guys got going on up there. To, to me, Kerwinsville is, is something that I've done since, or been going to since I've been a child. Um, you know, I fished Kerwinsville. I'm 32 years old and I've been fishing Kerwinsville since, oh my, forever, um, at least 20 plus years. Um, it's just a, it's a nice getaway. It's close to home for me. Um, it, it's centrally located in the state for a lot of folks. Um, we're right here in the heart of Clearfield County, right smack dab in the middle of the state. Um, so we, we like to joke we're, we're two hours from everywhere. So, um, it, it's just a good location for people to come to. And, um, it's, it's a nice lake for people to enjoy, you know, both in, you know, from a, a fishing aspect to, you know, a family aspect, um, you know, like you, uh, you know, attested to there, Ryan, there's, there's camping, there's trails, um, there's pavilions for picnics and there's, there's Frisbee golf. There's a lot of different activities for folks to do. Um, and it, it seems to be really well received by the community. Um, so it, it's just a, a, a fun place to be. Um, it means a lot to me. I, I serve on the board there and, um, uh, you know, I just want to make it as successful as it can be for the community. Um, that, that's my number one goal with being involved there. All right. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of that comes through, like I had the opportunity to come up and see the facilities, you know, get almost like a tour from, from you, you know, up and down the lake and, and see everything you guys got going on there. <clears throat> and really, again, you know, just trying to promote the lake and, and this tournament, like one of the videos we did last year was that lake breakdown at Kerwinsville. So really anybody that's interested in going up to fish the lake, you know, might get a few tips from that video, might get a little better understanding of the layout of the lake, and it might help them put a fish in the bag. You know, I, I think there's a lot of different species up there. So in general, you know, it's a, it's a really interesting body of water, with, especially with the West branch of the Susquehanna there. So that's, that's a good background. You know, I think a lot of people out there maybe don't even really necessarily know that that it's there. Is that fair? Do you think it's, it's pretty low key? That, that is a, a very fair statement to make. Um, when, when you Google lakes in central PA, Kerbinsville doesn't come up on most search engines. Um, and, and like you had alluded to earlier, it's kind of a hidden gem. Um, you know, you can come up here on a, on a Saturday afternoon in the middle of summer prime fishing and, it, and it's not busy. Um, it's kind of a low key lake compared to a lot of other lakes that we have in this region. Um, you know, with Glendale and Howard and, and those places like that, 
they see a lot more traffic, which is, you know, nice in a way, but, you know, we kind of want to get some more activity there at the lake. Um, but in a way, we kind of like that, you know, that seclusion of it, you know. So it's, it's just an awesome place. It, it really is. Yeah. So, all right. So we, we got this tournament coming up. So talk to me about this tournament. What's the name of the tournament, number one? Give us the, the date and times again. And let's just get right into, you know, any roles or regulations. What do you, you know, ultimately I want to talk prizes too. I want to show, show uh, anybody that's interested in, in what you got going on there to promote your tournament here. All right. Um, you know, first off, the, the name of the tournament is the Curvinsville Lake Muskie Challenge. Um, you know, we, I like to emphasize that lunge part of challenge. Uh, you know, we use the spelling that, you know, derived from Muskie Lunge. Um, so it kind of makes it a little bit unique. It's just a little bit of a unique twist I put on it for myself. Um, and it, as far as the tournament goes, uh, it's Saturday. Again, it's Saturday, May 22nd. Uh, registration times are from 5 a.m. until 6.45 a.m. Uh, fishing hours are from 7 a.m. until 4 p.m. Uh, and it, it's musky only. Um, some of the, the highlighted rules is it's 100% catch photo release. Um, it's artificial lures only. And something that we do a little bit different um, from, you know, different club tournaments with the, held within the state is uh, we do a cumulative, in, cumulative inch, um, you know, for the, for the prize. So what I mean by that is if you go to a typical tournament, it's the single largest fish that you, you know, register for your, your fish for the day. But in this event, I like to give credit for each and every fish that is caught. So if you catch two 30 inch muskies, you're actually going to bring back to the table that you caught 60 inches worth of fish. That way you're getting credit for both. Um, it's just something that, you know, I, I feel that these fish are so difficult to catch and hard to pursue that when you get into them, I feel that you need credit for it. So that's something I do a little bit different than, you know, the standard club tournament here in the state. Um, it seems to be received pretty well by the guys that participate. So we continue with it this year. Um, you, you talked about the prizes. I, again, something that sets this tournament apart is for simply $40 to sign up. It's $40 to sign on or sign in for an adult, 30 for a youth. Um, I consider youth anybody 16 and younger. And something that is really unique about this tournament is you have a very high probability of going home with more than what you invested into the day. Um, we give away a thousand dollars between the top three places. And I don't know an exact dollar amount um, without sitting down and figuring it out, but I'm approaching $5,000 worth of prizes that will be given away as either door prizes and or Chinese auction. Um, each and every prize is musky related from baits to musky apparel to musky release tools, bump boards, um, fishing rods and reels. Um, there's all kind of stuff and something that's big on the list this year. Um, I, I have to thank, um, especially I have to, I, I have a lot of sponsors that I need to thank. And today I don't have time to thank each and every one, but one that I really need to thank is Vance K laws of Muddy Creek. Vance is donating a, uh, 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 eight hour guided trip on Chautauqua for two folks. Um, that, that trip will also come with a one night stay and a hundred dollar prepaid visa gift card to use. However you like, um, whether you want to do another additional night or fuel to get up there, um, the only thing you'd need to do is purchase a New York state license. Um, that's something new for this year. And I also have another guided trip uh, on Lake Tyanesta um, with Colin Sebesky out of the Three Rivers chapter. Um, and his business name is uh, Musculvania Outdoors. Um, 
So I got to thank those two guys. It's something new this year, and hopefully it goes over well. I think it will. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a big deal. You know that I think I just think it's awesome that you're able to put all of these prizes together for guys that want to come out. You know that that really makes the event special. You know it's certainly not required for a tournament. You know it's we don't need that many excuses to get out there and do some musky fishing. Uh, Ryan had said about, you know, maybe wanting to touch base on some of these prizes here. I'm not going to name each and every individual prize because we'll be here all night. Um, but I do have a list here um, that I, you know, I like to throw out a couple uh, names here. All the money that's donated um, for the first, second, and third place prizes are donated by two different groups of people. Um, first is first place is five hundred dollars. Second place is three hundred dollars. Third place is two hundred dollars. All that prize money is guaranteed. Um, no matter how many people show up, no matter if the fish are caught or not, that money is guaranteed. Somebody's leaving with a check in their hands. Um, and I have to thank two people for that. Uh, first and second place are uh, donated by WW Equipment of Dubois. Um, and third place is donated by Corey Bookhammer of Upper 90 Chiropractic Clinic of Clearfield. A um, couple other cool gifts that we got going out this year. Um, we have a custom made bump board made by Bob Ingram of Ingram Cabinetry. Um, last year was the first year that Bob made us a board and it went over so well. I asked him to donate again. And he was tickled pink to do so. Um, also, there's uh, another large prize that I'd like to touch base on. Um, it's donated by two different groups. Um, the first part of this prize is a uh, is a Yeti style cooler um, donated by the Clearfield Cycle Club. And in that cooler, it will be loaded down with fresh meat. Um, donated by Adler's Meat Market of Phillipsburg. All that meat will be frozen and vacuum packed. There'll be almost 30 pounds of fresh meat, ranging from steaks to sausage to chicken to, to pork. There's all kinds of different meats in that. So that'll be a good prize to take home as well. Um, as like I said earlier, we have the two guided trips, but one by Vance K. Laws of Muddy Creek and one of Colin Sebesky of Muskelvania Guide Service. Um, now, I'm just going to run down through the list here real quick. Um, I'm not going to name each and every one, uh, but I'll touch on a few. Um, I have baits from JSP Outdoors, Big O's uh, Bucktails, Boggs Customs, Nimmer Swimmer Musky Lures, nice. um, Raleigh and Helen's Musky <laughs> Ski Shop, Tackle Industries, DJ Custom Baits, uh, Shoss Bait Company, uh, who else we got? Big Guy Baits, Leo Lures, Extreme Musky Lures, Pandemic Baits, Rabska Musky Lures, Nooch Baits, McBait Musky Lures, and that's just to name a few. The list goes on and on. Um, but something that I really want to touch base on, uh, Ryan has a photo. He's going to put it in the, in the video for everybody to see. Something that's unique this year, it's the first year we've done it. The first place winner, not only are they going to get a check for $500, but they're going to get a 52-inch chainsaw carved muskie that will hang on your wall or set on your mantle in your home. Um, that I got to thank Raymond Good of Naughty Ray Chainsaw Carvings of Bigler. Um, I approached Ray. I said to him what I wanted to do, what my brainstorm was, and he took the idea and ran with it. With it. Um, the idea started out as a 36-inch muskie. Raymond said that's not good enough. He went to he went all out and did a 52-inch. Um, it's it's a it's absolutely a piece of art. Um, you guys will all be able to see that once Ryan has the photo. Um, so some lucky winners are going to end up with that. Uh, hopefully their wife likes it on the wall. So <laughs> That's beautiful. I haven't looked at the picture. I know you sent me a picture earlier, uh, like a couple weeks ago maybe. But I haven't seen – is it is it completely done? 
it's completely done at this point. I have it in my possession, and I almost, in a way, don't want to get away. I almost kind of, in a way, want to keep it for myself. But, <laughs> but it will be given away to somebody, so uh, I'm ashamed to let it go, but it, it's it's absolutely beautiful. Um, I may have Ray make one for myself down the line here. Oh, you're going to have to talk to Lacey about that. You're going to have to get it done. I want to see a 52-inch wood carving on your wall. I think that's one of those cases it's better to ask for forgiveness than yes. permission. Yes, absolutely. Well done, sir. Once well it's done. Here, it's here. You got some food going on there too, right? I do. Um, each paid participant uh, will receive a meal at the end of the day. Um, during the award ceremony and the prizes and so forth, um, they'll, they'll get a meal. Um, on this year's menu, we're going to have barbecued pulled pork, parsley potatoes, um, macaroni salad, baked beans, and coleslaw, and some sort of a dessert. Um, and you get all that, you know, the, par the, the participation in the, in the event and the meal, and also, you know, a chance at all those prizes for 40 bucks. Um, and one thing that I'd like to point out is, you know, a lot of guys have asked me, you know, where does my $40 go? Um, and that, that's a great question. Um, your money that you, you know, have given to the Kerbinsville Lake for your paid participation and all the prizes that you enter in to get, um, all that money is going to go back into a stocking program for Muskie. Uh, we're not sure yet uh, when those Muskie are going to be purchased. Um, we have a goal of October of this year, this year. Um, it's a goal that, you know, we've had in place now, but it all depends on the revenue, what we bring in and when we can make this purchase. Um, but that's the date that we're shooting for is October. Um, we're going to be working in conjunction with the Nittany Valley Muskie Alliance to, to do this stocking. Um, so with that being said, there'll be purebred muskie. And they'll be coming in from the state of Wisconsin. Um, you know, I'm an avid member of the, the Nittany Valley Muskie Alliance, and I'm, you know, happy to partner with those guys to make this happen. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. So I didn't actually didn't know, and maybe I did know that, maybe I forgot, but the fact that, you know, you're putting that back into the fishery there in Kerwinsville, I mean, that's pretty awesome. So give me some, uh, some props, kudos on that one. That's, uh, that's pretty sweet, you know, build the fishery, you know, drop some more fish in there and, and make it, uh, continue to, to, to make it a, a fishery that's, that's going to, you know, kind of grow towards producing fish, you know, purebreds too. Um, so it, let me ask you this, is, is Kerwinsville known for mostly tigers at this point? Yep. Yep. Uh, in, in, for years, the state has stalked the tiger muskie um, species there. Uh, in the fall of 2019, the Nittany Valley Muskie Alliance stock the first ever purebreds into the lake um we're on a six-year study um uh, we've nittany valley muskie alliance has partnered with jared sayers and the pennsylvania fish and boat commission to do a six-year study and how that works is in the odd years nittany valley will stock purebreds in the even years the state will stock tigers after that six-year study is concluded they're going to go through and see which fish is actually taking better hold in that in that body of water and then they're going to make a, a determination whether they need to you know continue this tiger program or these muskies are going to be able to reproduce on their own and continue to you know sustain the population um we're right now in 2021 we're in year three of the study so this will be the second round for purebreds to go into the lake um so like you said, in 2019 was the first purebred stocking and we put just shy of 600 fish in. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a decent stocking. Um, Kerwinsville, you know, it's to me after fishing it, it, I think it's, it feels a lot bigger than it is maybe because of the river system too, but 600 fish, I mean, that's a pretty good stocking. I would think for that lake, you know, if you guys are getting multiples in over a couple of years, I mean, there's a huge opportunity to really expand the population there. Right. Ultimately, we would like to do more, um, but ultimately it comes down to funding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's something that we really rely on the community and, you know, rely on, you know, our fellow anglers to participate in events such as this 
in order to make those efforts possible. Um, it, it's, it's not possible without, you know, the help of each and every person that participates. It's not possible at all. Yeah. So, and I mean, yeah. I, I, uh, you know, we have to, you know, you know, both myself as a, as a representative of Kerbinsville Lake and a member of the Nittany Valley Muskie Alliance, you know, we, we have to thank the community because without them, none of this is possible. Yeah. And that's awesome. You know, working together to try to, you know, really just help the fishery, you know, from a, from the muskie standpoint, you know, put, putting fish in, you know, these are, these are fish that we obviously love to chase. You know, the muskie community I consider is fairly small in PA, but I see it growing. You know, I see more and more interest. I see more and more people getting out there doing it. So hopefully you guys have success up there with it and you can, you know, establish some purebreds in there and, and, uh, you know, grow, grow some of those mid to upper forties fish that, that'll make a, make a weekend. You know, sometimes you're just after that one bite, but that's, I mean, that's good stuff, man. I, I really love the area, you know, some of the footage we got up there, the cliffs, you know, seeing some of those iconic areas for Kerwinsville, um, got some friends up that way, you know, they, they grew up there, uh, in that area in, uh, downtown, I'll call it downtown Clearfield. Uh, but Kerwinsville is not, uh, not that far from Clearfield, right? I mean, you're talking 15, maybe 20 minutes, less than that. It, 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 it's exactly eight miles from okay. downtown Clearfield to the lake. I got gotcha. you. So um, it's just a short distance off uh, Interstate 80. Um, you're only about 15 minutes off uh, I-80 that runs right through the heart of Clearfield. Um, you know, it, like I said earlier, we're, we're two hours from everywhere. So, um, you know, being being located in central PA, it's a good opportunity to pull folks from all over the state. Um, and, and we we see that from time to time. Um, it and we we get a lot of feedback from folks that you know, hey, Kerbins was so good, I wish it was closer. Um, it it can be like any lake. It it can be a difficult lake to fish at times, um, but at times it can be, you know, a high producing lake. Um, we've had days there where we've had multiple muskie in a day. And then we've had days like all muskie fishermen, we found nothing. So, um, you know, as Ryan can attest to last year in the tournament, we, we had a big goose egg on the board, but we, we got some, we got, we got per, some perch, perch. We, 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 we love in the, we're loving the husky jerks. Yeah. Perch were on fire last year. Um, Last year, you got a kind of sour taste in your mouth. The day before the tournament, it was 70 degrees and sunny. And the, the day of the tournament, we were in the 40s and low 50s. So we had a major cold front blow through the night before the tournament, which kind of put a damper on things. But, you know, as long or as far out as we schedule this thing, that, that's just part of it. You know, you, you try to do everything in your power to, to make it a go, you know, a positive go at it. But mother nature had other plans it's fishing man that's part of it that's part of fishing tournaments i mean you got to deal with the elements that's what makes it fun though you know find you know get out there try to try to adapt to the changing conditions and as you and i both know ryan you know some of the days that we're unsure of fishing will produce good things yeah yeah that's true i was gonna i was gonna flash that picture again we still got a that, that was a fun day. We had, uh, you know, fish and get, got a bigger fish in the bag. And, you know, that's one of those things. And, you know, it's funny, Cody, because we started talking what it's probably been, it's probably been a couple of years now. I remember uh, I met you for the first time at Muskie Max, but we, we were talking through text, you know, a way, a ways before that. And, uh, you know, it's been, it, that was fun to be a part of, you know, a PB fish for you uh, on, on a day and, you know, we share the same birthday, stuff like that. It's, uh, yep. It's good. Um, you know, just something about that fish that Ryan's talking about. Um, we, we were fishing a body of water in Western PA and both of us, you know, coming from a distance away and we were talking the whole way there, you know, did we make the right call going today? It's you know, raining cats yeah. and dogs. And, and we, we thought, well, we've had it planned. Let's do it. We got out there and both of us ended up with fish in the bag and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to say I had Ryan along because he netted my personal best fish. Um, yeah. and here in a 
just a few, few short weeks, I'll have a replica of that fish on the wall. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm anxious to get that back. So, yeah, it's, uh, but that's how it is, man. We had a nasty cold front and sometimes you just got to keep fishing and, and good things will happen. But I mean, that's what I expect uh, for you guys up on Kerwinsville. You know, it's never easy. Uh, but if you can, you know, you can put some time in, get on a pattern. Uh, so my question for you, though, is anybody that's watching this, that's interested in fishing Kerwinsville, they may or may not have time to go check that breakdown we did. What, what, give, give me a couple of tips for, uh, for Kerwinsville. What's your, uh, what's a hot tip to get somebody, you know, close to trying to get a muskie in the bag? Um, you know, there's a lot of areas on that lake that hold fish. Um, but if I were to have to say, you know, if I were to give people a pointer is, you know, uh, put yourself in a position near the cool slide area, um, or anywhere along the, the breast of the dam. Um, both spots are, you know, famous for producing fish and not only producing fish, but big fish. Um, there's a lot of areas in that lake that have a lot of weed lines. Um, right now, early in the year, uh, the weed lines are just starting to poke up. So if, if you can find the weeds, you know, pressure them. Uh, and, and like any lake, if you can find the bait, you'll, you'll find, you know, more than likely you'll find some skis behind them. Uh, that being said, uh, you want to fish. I mean, Kerbinsville is kind of a, a shallow lake compared to a lot in the state. Uh, the average depth on that lake is 12 to 15 feet. So targeting them weed lines is crucial. Um, you know, for me, that's, that's my go-to is to find the weeds. Uh, find anywhere. There's only a few spots in the lake that would produce, you know, or provide a, a, a point, so to say. And anytime you can find one of them points, uh, you know, that's somewhere to target as well. Uh, you know, de depending on, you know, where the bait's at is kind of where the fish are going to be. And also, you know, play in the wind. You know, the wind at Curvinsville is always a a, a factor um you know knowing the, the way the wind goes it's going to push the bait into a one specific corner which is going to be that cool slide area and that's always a, a a hot area to be not not only for musky but for any species that Kerbinsville has to offer um but you know for this video here you know talking musky that's a that's a good corner to be in um you have a couple nice shelves in there that the fish will lay off those brake lines. There's a stump field over in that area that always seem to hold fish and produce fish. So, um, you know, if you're if you're looking for any advice once you get up there, you know, for the day of the event, unsure where to go, hit me up. I'll be glad to talk to you um, and hopefully be able to get you on some fish. Um, I'm by no means an expert, but I do have a lot of hours in on that lake. Um, so like you said, talk to me and I'll be glad to help you out. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. I, uh, don't be afraid to try that little, the a little, uh, little open water trolling too. Yeah. The open water trolling bite, um, you know, predominantly Kerbinsville is a, is a casting lake. However, the, the tournament winner last year, Dave Commons, um, got his fish on a trolling bite. Um, it, the conditions kind of made guys do some weird things. Guys that are, you know, typically a casting guy were trolling and trolling guys went to casting. They were doing anything they could to find fish last year. And, uh, just happens to be that the winning fish was caught on a trolling bite. Yeah. Um, the, would, the yeah. lake has a, a lot of ups and downs on the bottom for the contour of the bottom of the lake. So trolling can be tough, but it can also be, you know, it can also produce fish. Um, so don't be afraid to try to troll. Yeah, that, uh, that's why I wanted to mention that. I, I saw, I saw where Dave was at last year. I was tracking him. Yep. <laughs> I, yep. I know where he was at. That's a, it's all fun, man. It's part of tournament fishing. You know, you got some experienced guys, you got some inexperienced guys. I still am falling well under inexperience, but you know, I am as well. It's, uh, you gotta learn, you gotta start somewhere and you gotta learn. So. But anyway, so that's Kerwinsville. So you've got this, 
you've got Kerwinsville Lake, you know, great area again, you know, for, for an event like this. Um, it's a good area for families to go out and hang out and enjoy the outdoors. You got a, you got a really beautiful body of water up there into the West, you know, the, uh, the, uh, what is that? The West branch of the Susquehanna, and, Correct. Uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's just a fun time. So where, can, if somebody has any questions on this tournament, do you have somewhere they can get a hold of you or is there, uh, where, where can we go to get more information on it? We've only got, we got what, another week or so. What is it? It's the 22nd, right? Correct. Yep. Yep. Saturday the 22nd. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to me via email. Uh, you can, you can find me or my email address, um, will be C as in cat F as in Frank Y as in York E as in entertainment 32 at gmail.com. So again, C phi 32 at gmail.com. Uh, I check my email every two to three hours. So if you hit me up on that, I'll be sure to respond. Um, I can send you a list of the rules or any information that you, you're, you're requesting. Um, and if you reach out to me there and you have any further questions and actually want to, you know, speak to me, I'll shoot you my email or shoot you my phone number and you can give me a buzz. So, um, I'm, I'm very open to answering any and all questions. Don't be, don't hesitate. All right, man. Sounds good. So for those of you that are interested in making a trip up to Kerwinsville to fish an awesome tournament, uh, Cody, you put on an awesome tournament. I'm looking forward to seeing this thing grow over the next couple of years too. You know, you're killing it prize wise. You put a real good meal together late. Is that, is Lacey making potato salad or macaroni salad? No, no. Okay. Actually, this year, this last year was a little bit different. We ended up doing the hamburgers and hot dogs last year. It was the easiest thing to do in, you know, with everything going on with the pandemic. Um, but this year we're actually having a catered meal. Um, it's going to be uh, sponsored by the Country Butcher of Shiloh, PA. Um Jason does a great job out there at the country butcher and we're happy to have him on board this year. I think you guys, you know, most everybody's going to like the meal. So I can, um, it's just, it's a, it's a great fun day. So I, I love to have you there. And, um, again, it's not possible without you guys. Um, <laughs> all right. Anybody that is interested, you guys got to give Cody a shout. Get up there to Kerwinsville. Take a look at this beautiful area. You know, get on this body of water and do some fishing. This is a prime opportunity for the guys out east, guys in central PA, um, even guys down here where I'm at, you know, basically southwestern PA. If you're interested in a solid tournament, prizes, what an awesome experience that is. So, Cody, keep up the good work. You're doing a great job with this tournament stuff. Said so I'm excited to see how it grows because you're going to have a heck of a time out doing your – that, that's, that's that's the hardest part of this event um I, you know i just wanted to touch base there's a couple goals that i have that each year i i set for myself um i never tell anybody the goals um i mean i, I make a couple of the goals public but a couple of my goals are and this is the first time the public will hear them if i can sit back and watch you know people have a a good time and have a smile on their face, then, then all my goals have, have, have been re reached. Um, one of the other goals that I like to set is each year that I do this tournament, I want to grow the day by the, you know, grow the youth each year. Um, last year I had three youth involved. Um, this year I'd like to have four or more. Uh, the more youth I can get involved, the better. Um, and something that I, one of the prizes I did not touch on, but since we're on the topic of youth, I have to reach out or I have to thank, um, Pete Mena and team Amsoil. Um, we all have watched Pete online. Um, some of us may or may not have had the opportunity to meet Pete. Um, but I've had the opportunity in the last couple months to have some phone conversations with Pete. Um, and something that we've done this year is Pete and Team Amsoil have done five prize boxes for the youth. Um, those prize boxes consist of a Plano 3700 box, 
Each box will contain um, a hook file, a hook cut set of hook cutters, jaw spreaders, um, a set of needle nose pliers, and one bait. Um, you know, it's something that you know I think we can all attest to is this sport is expensive. Um, that being said, my I, I look back to, at myself when when I first got into the sport of musky fishing. I was gung ho to get all the rods and reels and all the tackle that was needed to do the sport, but I didn't take the time to obtain all the, the special release tools. So through my conversations with Pete, I asked how he could help. And this is, you know, the best way that he felt that he could help. So he put together with his, you know, the, through the help of his sponsorship, uh, he put together a prize package for youth only to get some release tools in their hands. That way they can focus on obtaining all the other stuff, you know, all the fun stuff of musky fishing, all the baits and the rods and reels. So we'll give a prize package to the first five youth that sign up um, and they'll all get a set of release tools to go home with. That's awesome. That is, that is very, very cool that he was able to do that for you guys for this tournament. I am a sucker for youth fishing. You know, I know Muskie's Inc's heavily involved our chapter. Our chapter is going to be doing a youth outing. Um, I want to try to get some guys on to talk about that, to do some promotion of that. I mean, it's a, that's a huge deal because that's how you grow the sport, you know, get these kids away from their phones and their playstations and their eye, eye devices, iPads, I whatever, get them out there with some fishing gear and, and put them on some fish. I mean, that's, that's how we grew up. You know, we had, I didn't have a cell phone until I was, I don't even tell you, I was a late teen probably before I had a, a cell phone, but we, you know, we were outside fishing in the creek or playing sports. I mean, that's, it's such a big deal to me to get these kids involved. So do a great job with that, reaching out to Pete. And that's so awesome that he was able to support you guys for this tournament. You know, I mean, most of us are going to be, you know, members of Muskies Inc. Um, and they, I think they have the perfect motto, you know, youth fisheries and research. Um, and at the top of that motto is youth. Without the youth, this sport will die. This this culture will die. Um, they are the future. Um, so we as adults need to do everything that we can do to to put the right tools in their hands and the right information in their head. You know, to to get out there and you know, number one, be successful fishermen, and number two, you know, teach them the right way how to pass on you know this lifestyle or this hobby, I should say, you know, onto their, you know, their, their young kids, um, you know, and it starts with us as adults. Um, also, I need to thank Joel Morrow of uh, chapter 16. Um, Joel also was a, um, a, you know, a big key player in that donation as well. Um, you know, he helped with that, you know, getting that situated as well. So I have to thank Joel for that as well. Um, uh yeah i mean i i can't say it enough the the youth is our future um we need to do everything as adults as we can to to set them up on the right track to you know to to continue this sport uh yeah i can't say it enough uh i love kids i love fishing they go hand in hand and uh you know it's just something that i felt needed to be done something that i felt you know do something bigger than yourself and and uh and get some youth involved so this is you know just a small way that i felt that i could do that um and without pete and joel this wouldn't have been possible nice all right give me one more one more rundown here we got the kerwinsville what is this the musca lunge challenge yep, yep. just to you know to wrap it up uh it's the kerwinsville musky challenge uh, the date for that is Saturday, September or Saturday, May 22nd, uh, registration from 5 a.m. to 6.45 a.m. Cost of $40 for an adult, $30 for youth, 16 and younger. Uh, fishing hours are from 7 to 4, a meal and awards to follow. Um, a few of the frequently asked questions. This is a 100% catch photo release event. Uh, artificial lures only, 
Um, it's an individual tournament. You're allowed to have multiple, multiple people on the boat, but each person will, you know, submit their own entries at the end of the day. Um, you know, th that kind of is all the, the key highlights. If anybody has any questions, again, you know, reach out to me, cfi32 at gmail.com. Once you reach out to me there, if there's any questions, I'll provide you with my phone number. Um, you, you're more than welcome to give me a call. We'll, we'll chit chat and talk fishing. So, um, again, you know, if, if there's any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'm more than happy to help you out. Um, uh, more than happy to, you know, get you pointed in the right direction as far as lodging, if need be, you know, we do have camping available that, you know, at the, at the facility, uh, there are a handful of cabins, uh, a lot of tent sites. Um, so there's, there's opportunities to stay there on site. Um, you know, it's just something, it's going to be a lot of fun and we'd love to have you. Uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a rain or shine event. The only thing that will, um, change the, the times of the event is, uh, if we would happen to have, you know, lake flooding or, you know, in the event of, uh, you know, inclement weather, such as lightning, thunder and lightning, then uh, we'll make a, a game day decision and either postpone the start of the tournament or, you know, um, you know, call it off a little bit early. Um, but that'll be a, a game time decision. But looking at the extended forecast, I think we're, I think we're good to go. Um, you know, just as long as the fish cooperate, it should be a good day. That's the easy part, right? Yep. All um, right. Yeah. And, and again, uh, we'd love to have you and something that uh, I wanted to throw out there. Um, anybody that has, you know, traveling in mind, if you're on the fence coming from a distance, I do do a prize that uh, is a $50 gift card for the furthest traveling participant. Um, just keep in mind, it's 40 to get in and that prize is $50. Um, so if you, if you're on the fence and on coming because of the travel, uh, keep that in mind or there could be a prize for you. That's uh that is also very cool. All right, let's wrap this one up. So anybody that's interested in checking out Kerwinsville, give Cody a shout. I said earlier, get up there, get your kids out there, get on the water and go try to catch a muskie. And it's, it's going to be an awesome event up there. Hope the weather's good for you guys. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting a, a post Kerwinsville report from you too. I want to know how the fishing was. I want to, I want to see Mr. Cody five with a uh, holding a, a muskie on the front of your boat. That's what I want to see. That's the ultimate goal, but I'll be just as happy if anybody else catches one. If we, if we get to, you know, if we get to have anybody that's catching a fish, I'll, I'll be happy. I'll be tickled pink. Um, the only thing that would make any fish better is if one of the youth caught it. There you go. So. All right, guys, reach out to Cody and check out Kerwinsville Lake and this awesome musky tournament that you've put together. Hey, Cody, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on tonight to talk about, uh, the tournament and, uh, let me know when uh, when Lacey's cooking again. I want to come up and get some. I want to come up and get some food. Last year was was amazing. Yeah, um, I this this gut here that I have uh, is definitely well earned. My wife is a good cook, and uh, Ryan can attest to that. Um, I definitely don't go hungry in the Fi household. There you go, uh, um, Ryan. I want to thank you for having me on. Uh, I greatly appreciate what you do for me and in the, in the Kerbinsville Lake. Um, you know, if anybody has the opportunity, get on and check out Ryan's channel here on YouTube. A lot of great information, not only for Kerbinsville Lake, but numerous lakes throughout the state. Um, you know, I, I can't say enough about Ryan and his channel. Uh, his channel ended up, you know, giving me a lot of insight on, you know, musky fishing and just fishing in general. Um, it's been a great thing. I, I, I frequent his site quite often and, uh, I, I highly recommend that you all do as well. Um, so get over to his page, give him a, uh, a like and a share and, uh, 
you know, help grow his channel as well. I appreciate that. All right, Yens guys. What, what are we going to say here? We'll just say uh, tight lines. Tight lines and uh, hope to see you at the lake. We'll see you next time. Ha, 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 ha.